Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we're featuring a car. Well, if you followed SEMA this year, this uh, caused a lot of commotion. People just went crazy for this thing. It's a 1966 Chevelle. It's built by the Ring Brothers out of Wisconsin. Now, not the Ring Ling Brothers. Those are a bunch of clowns. They're dancing bears and all that. These are the guys without the, the bear on the tricycle. These are the guys that actually build cars. <laughs> Let's meet uh, Jim and, and Mike. Come on in, guys. Jim, hey, how you doing? Thanks for having Boy, us. Boy, beautiful Jay. job, thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate it. You know, I know you guys built a Pantera a while back, so I've sort of been following, and you just do just incredible, incredible work. I know GM gave you guys an award for this car, didn't they? Yes, what they did you get? They gave us best to show at SEMA. Wow, okay. I love the fact that you kept the body mostly stock, but just done some outrageous things with it. So let's start with this. Basically, a 66 Chevelle. How did this come about? The owner come to you? Did you go to the owner? What happened? Actually, we, we uh, met the owner, his name's Chris McVee, um, he's from Ohio. Uh, we met him at a good guy show in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. And he said, look guys, I, I really like what you guys do, I want to build a car. I want to do a 66 Chevelle and the only thing that I got to have in my car is metal seats. Metal seats. That's all he cared about was metal seats. <laughs> well, that's kind of funny. <laughs> but that's good, but then that lets you guys, isn't it kind of a pain when the owner goes, I have a vision, and it's just awful. You know it's not going to work. So when they trust it to you, you get a beautiful product like this. You know, this is the kind of car, I, I like this color. What's the reaction been to the color? I'll tell you, when we first did it for SEMA in our shop, when people would walk in, uh, they'd say, who picked the color? And we were like this, because right. nobody wanted to fess up. But Well, did you, did you consult the owner, or did you just paint it? We did. We sent him some pictures, but as you know, just small, even though we did some spray outs. Mm -hmm. You know, we had to convince him to go with it, and because he really wanted a color that wasn't about color, he wanted to be about what we did and draw well, you in. Well, that's what I like about this color because a lot of times when the engineering is not good or something is off, people paint it a flamboyant color, so your eye goes to, "Wow, I love that color." You're not really looking at the shape of the car. This, this really accentuates, I think, the design and all the little bits because. You'll have to watch this video maybe two times just to pick up all the subtle little little things that are happening here. Like, uh, for example, up here. What is this? Clutch, brake? It's a twin. Uh, so it's front okay. brake, rear brake, and okay. then clutch. Okay. And this is where you check your fluids, right? That's here? correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, I walk right by that the first time. Um, the hood pins, the carbon fiber accents, even this little badge here. I originally thought that was 416 horsepower, but it's not. It's 400, oh, 415 cubic inch, 1,000 horsepower. Correct. Correct. Okay, very nice. And at first, I didn't see the, uh, the carbon fiber bumpers. See, this is why innocent men go to prison when you have eyewitnesses <laughs> like me. No, I think it was chrome. I think it was chrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was chrome bumper. No, no, it wasn't. No, it's not. Now, the car appears to have been lowered, and I guess it has, but there's some visual thing here that I'm missing. Tell me what we, what we have here. Well, if you notice, the, on a, all typical GM cars these years, the fenders actually went down under the car. Okay. So you can see we actually extended the rockers all the way through where the fender now sits on top of the rocker. Okay. Um, and then stretching the rocker down an extra inch, obviously that gets rid of that pinch weld and all of the stuff that... That you and normally you can at. see the frames on these cars in right. the in the front behind the tire. It always wraps around. That's right. Yeah. And okay. uh, by moving, closing the fender up a little bit, we got rid of that look. You know, it's interesting. We now live in an era where chrome is sort of not on its way out, but just environmental reasons, economic mm -hmm. reasons. Like when you do the chrome on. It's a mid '60s Chrysler. It costs you twenty-five thousand, right. thirty thousand dollars. So to to go to this new sort of look, where I don't. I don't miss the absence of chrome on this car at all. Uh, I like the little touches. Now, tell me about this door handle. Where, where, where is this from? Well, you know, over the years when we started building these cars, mm -hmm. we've, we could never really find the right parts by just buying them. So we actually built them. And that's one of the handles that we do for our GM cars. Uh, we designed them years ago for a Camaro we did, and uh, that particular handle fits most of the early GMs. Oh, so anybody uh, that has a GM car, you could adapt these? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. They bolt right in the, you know, the stock 
position. And I love the little, are those Phillips? I can't, my eye don't make They're actually a, uh, they're socket a, head. A, like it's a socket head. Oh, I mean, they're just beautiful. I mean, that's the real attention to detail as opposed to just. Right, and making the handle. And that actually piece. removes, actually. The, this the, is actually two pieces. So right. this part, you know, you could actually color code. It could be all gloss black. Right, right. Uh, so that particular one was media blasted and then uh, anodized. And of course, the, the uh, rain gutters are gone. Gone. But yeah, we left part of it. The too. bump. Now tell me about the wheels. We, uh, we got together with HRE um, years ago, and they wanted to do a try to, you know, obviously HRE is a, a premier wheel company. And right, right. They wanted to get more into the muscle car market. And this particular wheel, we had, we had kind of drawn up and sketched on a napkin, and, and uh, we wanted to add this, this ring to this wheel. Right. Now, after all said and done, I really do like the wheel. The ring's, you know, uh, maybe a little controversy there, but it's kind of growing on me after the yeah. fact. But it's, uh, HRE spent so much time putting this ring together with this wheel. Right. We felt obligated to put them on the car. Gotcha. Uh, well, it looks, SEMA. yeah, I like the rear one better because it's recessed. That's mm -hmm. correct. A yeah. little bit. You know, that, there's so much talk these days about unsprung weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that the ring, when it's projected outward, it gives it, Makes it look like a heavier wheel right. than it probably is. And it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the rear view mirror. We have a camera. Is there, is there a, well, there's no screen in the car. No, that's okay. just a recording camera. Um, it's, the mirrors were all actually handmade. To be honest with you, we started out, instead of building this particular carbon part, on the 2013 Mustang GTs, there's companies that actually build caps, carbon caps for the original mirror. So gotcha. you pop the plastic off and you put these carbon pieces on. Oh, cool. So we bought them and then basically built the mirrors around them. So we built all the aluminum inside. I see. And, and this camera is like a, what, a GoPro? It's a, it's a replay, actually. It's, a, it's just an onboard camera to uh, show your wife how bad you've been to oh, the Oh, yeah, car. and this is nice because <laughs> after you get stopped for speeding, the policeman just takes it yeah. and hands it to the judge. The judge watches the That's footage exactly and then right. you put in jail. Yeah. Um, very nicely done. How big is that tire? It's as big as we could get. It's a 345 30 20. Okay. So it's a 13 inch wheel in the back and uh, well, and, and the side exhaust, boy, that's nicely done. That's really cool. Actually, that's a few different pieces. You know, we literally cut the quarters off. That panel is, is, a, is all aluminum, the right. major part of the quarter, obviously the stack up and then the, the third black piece uh, bolts into that. But it was a way to mount the exhaust better and be able to do it without rubbing. Have you had much? miles on this car. I'm curious to see if this will bubble. Well, that's powder coated. That part oh, shouldn't. Okay. It uh, shouldn't powder, or, yeah, it shouldn't, uh, it okay. shouldn't bubble. Okay, nicely done. All right, moving around the back of the car. Little spoiler, that's nicely done. And again, that same theme of having these little screws. I don't know, that just says quality to me when each one is nicely spaced, you know, and all the heads seem to be going in the same direction, even though they, doesn't really matter. With it's the sock, so, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. Yeah, nicely done. I, that always looks like quality to me whenever I see that because it reminds me of uh, watches. Yeah, and that's course, a good. It's called the recoil. It is. And you got your carbon fiber bumper here as well. Can we open the trunk? Sure. Boy, inside. Now, what am I hearing? That is actually the pull down because it's carbon. We didn't want to have to slam it. So oh, I see. It's so, a, it's okay, a, cool, cool. So obviously, this is your gas tank here. Standard what? 17 gallon, 18 Actually, gallon? Actually, that's a pretty small one. I think it's like 16. Uh, 16. Oh, 16. Gallon, yeah. Okay. I like this too, so you don't spill all over the place. Right. Kind of a little of the Shelby yeah. idea. And this is your battery disconnect. Boy, that's nicely done too. Battery disconnect switch is there. Use and a lot of that McMaster car stuff, you know, all that big. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah well, they, they yeah. deliver here like once it's, a day. It's awesome. I, They're my I, favorite store. And it's hilarious because yeah. I say, I need a washer. Okay, and the, a truck will come and go. <laughs> no. here's, and you'll have it the next yeah, day. Yeah, here's your, here's your CAD plated washer. You know, and this is a, what, a charging port like? To, it is. Okay. The battery's actually hid inside, so you yeah, don't want to have to tear it apart. Beautifully done. Look at the uh, uh, fire extinguisher there. And so when I shut this, you'll hear the electric. You just basically touch it on there. Go click ahead and pull it. it down and click it. A little harder. There, there you go. go. It's like the Hulk. If yeah. <laughs> Very Creaking. Nice cool. Now, who came up with the name Recoil? The owner or you guys? Uh, Jim, actually. We did. Uh, the 
the owner wanted to call it contraband, and I didn't really want to go there. So <laughs> I said, the cops stopped moving <laughs> yeah. every time. Yeah, yeah. So I, I said, how about, how about recoil? And, and he went for it. So. OK. Can we take a look at the engine? Let's go, sure. Let's go to the front of the vehicle and see what's under the hood. Aluminum hood with carbon fiber insets. Uh, Actually, the entire that? hood's carbon. Oh, oh it is? Yep. OK. Well, that's nicely done. Yeah, and it's a new carbon. It's actually, uh, it's copper wire they put in this new carbon, and then they actually, uh, like, anodize a different color. Are these your own hood these pins as well? These are pins. Um, well, these are just all quality stuff. Oh, I see, and it's got a, uh, a detent here, right? Yeah. So you yeah. can't... Well, our, our hood pins are kind of interesting because most hood pins just had the straight hole through it. Right. Ours actually adjust to the angle of your hood, so they oh, always okay. sit in the saddle the way they should. But. Very nicely done, guys. So what do we have here, an L7 motor? This is a Wagner 416 LS7. Okay. Um, it's got a Whipple blower on it. Um, our Ring Brothers valve covers, which takes care of all the coils. Obviously, they're right. kind of, them LS motors always had them hanging out there. Runs on pump gas? Or you Runs need... on 91 pump gas. Wow. Um, makes right at a right at 1,000 horse, nine, 980. And this is a uh, air cleaner cover? It is, you know, the it had a big old air cleaner hanging out there and we didn't like the way it looked through the hood, so we wanted it to kind of come together as the hood was closed and it kind of mimics the blower uh, ribs. Yeah, I see, I see that point. Jesus, just just beautiful work, guys. What, and look at this hood, just, just, God. Tell me about these pieces, is this something you sell as well? We do, you know, years ago we, obviously we were big Mustang guys and we wanted uh, them hinges were just so horrible, so we said, let's just design a hinge that works. So, right. Well, see, that's why I like this color, because I'm focusing on the build, and I'm not overwhelmed by the color. I, I don't really like the ones that hitch in the face. I like that subtle, because this could pull in somewhere. What's that, Chevelle? And then, oh, I, I like the little latches. Little, yeah, you can latches pop them. here, just sort of, you pop that out to change the air filter. Now, the, the little pan in the bottom of the hood, I have to admit, was a a mistake. After Where we look at mistake. This this piece here. Oh yeah, I wonder why that was there. It's it's there because when the car was all done and assembled right before SEMA, we figured out that the Whipple stamp on top of the blower actually was just touching the bottom of the carbon hood. Right. And we were like, God, what are we gonna do? So we ground the Whipple off, thinking yeah. that would take care of it. Well, it didn't. So then we were panicking, and we had to put an insert in the bottom of the hood to to make enough clearance so it didn't rub. But I think that's great. God, it's, it's amazing. Just and you all all done in house, huh? We do everything in house. Um, the interior, we get some help outside, but everything. Not else, much on this. There's more bolts than than stitches yeah. inside that car. Because everybody thinks you know you got to be in L.A. or New York or these major markets where all the suppliers are, and you guys are just about the middle of the country, it's as far away from middle of a cornfield in yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. It's good to the interior of the car. Now, why did the uh, owner want uh, metal seats? Has he spent time in the electric chair? I mean, what, was the, what, was, what was the reason for that? I think he just wanted the simplicity, you know, of even though there's a lot going on, it's just very simple. It doesn't look like any metal seat I've ever seen because not being a designer myself, I would have thought, well, I'll get some kind of metal chair and perforate it like the old Ford GT and put it in. But you, this looks like it hangs in a cradle, sort of, but it doesn't. You have this outer piece here that holds your roll bar and then your, your seat in here. Okay, very we cool. We tried to make the seat, really, the leather portions of the seat in only areas where it actually touches your body. That right. was kind of the idea. Easy enough to get into, just kind of fall into it here. And uh, yeah, it, it, you'd think the seat would be uncomfortable, but it's not. And this is adjustable, right? Right it here? It is, right where? here. Oh, I see, yeah. Just. Pull it forward, yeah. Yeah, there you go. You probably are. Can probably you move the seat I have up, something huh? against tilt wheel. I don't know. To me, it always should be straight ahead. You know, whenever I see a 32 Ford or something with the tilt wheel, it always looks weird to me because I just like a regular steering column. Uh, very nicely done. Let me move my mic here. Okay, let's. What is the transmission? We haven't discussed that. It's a six speed. What, what make? Uh, Tremec. You, oh, Tremec. Okay, yep. that's what we use. The yep. Tremecs mm -hmm. are unbelievable. Yep. It's a, I'll tell you what, it shifts really nice. That's a yeah. nice shift in transmission. And I like the fact that the owner chose to go with a manual transmission. Uh, let's look at those door handles. Now, this is what, these are bicycle? Uh, yeah, it's a are. mountain bike handle. Huh? Very cool. And you've kept this round theme with the, 
Well, I you guess that's the a ring, reservoir. isn't it? Yeah. It's, the, it's the power window switch. You just yeah, rotate you just, it. And... You just sort of touch it one yeah. way. Okay. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Okay, now your race pack is right in front of your steering wheel. Let's get to... <laughs> well, I guess you could lower the... Oh, you can lower the wheel. There you go. There you go. See, the race pack, not only... I mean, we wanted a race pack in it, but we built that whole housing you see around the race pack to hold the actual right. race pack. To, so know. what do we got here? This is... That's actually the headlights. That is the valet switch for the start system, which means if you lose your key fob, yeah. you can flip that switch and go. Um, and then the three holes in the top of the race pack are right or left turn indicator, right turn, okay. and then high beam. And this is start? That's the start. Okay. And then radio sounds. What we, do we have here? Is this a brake? That's look? a bias adjuster for bias the brakes. Bias adjuster, okay. Yeah. And down there, what is that? Down oil? that is a boost gauge. Oh, boost gauge, of course. Okay. Yeah. And what is this little. Uh, well, that is a, just theory. a pod to control the radio, so you ain't got to reach forward. So you have to go like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. I'm so rich. I don't want to have to. <laughs> so let's just do it right from here. God, it's a big rearview mirror. That's up from the J.C. Whitney catalog. Yeah. Right? That's a big J.C. Uh, Whitney. It uh, looks like it. It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a Winston This Cup is where they say, Mike, this is the 599 <laughs> yeah. big and the, mirror. The funny part of it is, is you can't use glass in them cars. And I didn't realize that when I bought a race mirror that it's this polished stainless and not oh, glass. Oh, that's right. But, you know, it works great. Well, Actually, it, I like it. It works perfectly you well. You can't see yourself. It's kind of good. Yeah. And, and the seat is adjustable. Yeah. Yep. And what do you call this color? This we is a call it a BASF, uh, what is it? We S call it a uh, desert storm color. You it's know, kind of a militant. I was going to say, it looks almost military. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I thought, well, that doesn't sound right. But I guess that's true, isn't it? Well, that's, yeah. I mean, is, is it a color you guys mixed yourself? No. Or is it something like it is. That? They have a system called the Color Max system, which allows you to look at chips, but it doesn't allow you to revert it back to what it came from. And not being metallic, I imagine it's easy once you, if you get a scrape or a cut. It's up to it is, except it shows um, yeah. any dirt that yeah. you would get in it while painting. But yeah, you're right, to repair. Very impressive. Now the back is not, those are not jump seats of any kind, right? No, no. it's, uh, the guy wanted a stereo in it, and them are actually subwoofers that we tried to make go away and uh, just be part of the theme. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's a really loud radio. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I'd rather listen to the engine. In fact, let's take it for a ride right now. So what do we do? Bury the clutch, put a foot on the brake, and then touch the red button. Let's do what the ringmaster says. <laughs> so you need your foot on the brake too. Sounds good. Power steering? It does. What's the rear end ratio on it, you know? This has got a 411, it's, oh, it does. it's too tall. Pull's good. There's that long pull. There it starts yeah. pulling there. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny to you to think the 454 Chevelle, all those cars are so fast. Or is this just, uh, just dust them? I it's mean. their lunch. Man, that's pulled hard. Yeah, yeah, first gear is useless. Isn't it? <laughs> wow, that's really amazing for second gear. Yeah. Because I expected a bit of a lag and then, you know. Third gear is even more impressive. Yeah, yeah. Right here's a good third gear spot. Violent. <laughs> I mean, this is third gear at what, 3,000 RPM? Yeah. Oh, good. Oh my God, this is the pull! It's got a nice feel to it. Right I'm glad the owner's not 16. He'd yeah. be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> this is not a car you buy for your kid. Yeah. What's the name of the engine builder again? Carl Wagner, Wagner Motorsports. Carl Wagner, nice job, Carl. Yeah. You'll be hearing from me. Yeah. I'm going to be calling you. You know, these Chevy motors are just incredible. Yeah. Everybody goes crazy for 4K or whatever European stuff, but nothing's got this kind of torque and power. Jeez. You know, 
know, it's nice to see a SEMA car you can actually drive. Because a lot of times I go, and I appreciate it, but when I see chrome rotors and things like that, I go, you, you, yeah. you can't use it, you can't drive it. What's We've always built cars you can drive. Yeah. I mean, that's what they're meant for. <laughs> gear is so short on this thing that you, you, you get nothing but wheel spin but it's just the power is just unbelievable uh, we, we got a cop sitting up there so I think we need to get out of here pretty quick it's time to go yeah <laughs> getting on the on-ramp and let's step on it You're the first guy to ever put this in six gear. There you go. Even with 411s at 60 miles an hour, we're talking about 16, 1800 RPM, something like that. So if you can put a two speed in this thing, it'd still be crazy. Even a power glide. Nice and stiff, but not uncomfortably so. It's firm. Steering is very nice. The only thing you think I would change is maybe the brake master cylinder because it takes a lot of pressure to stop. It just takes the slightest touch to make this thing go crazy, but you need a lot of pressure. You, yeah. have, you, you only have almost need like both feet on the brake. It's amazing how it takes that little bit to start building that boost and then it really just wants to propel you. Get that long pull third gear. Ah! Of trouble with this car. You know, I drive cars all the time where people say, oh, it has 800 horse, oh yeah, and you go, yeah, okay, and then you go and you go, that feels like 450, 500. This feels like a thousand. Wow, what an incredible car. And I'm not, I'm not going, Chris, I'm not going to do a burnout in your car. You, you can't, <laughs> as much as I'd like to. This thing's got such incredible power. But you know, it's fun to see a a SEMA car, a show car, a concept car that you can actually drive on the street, you know. Because um, when we finish car and we take it out for the first time, we need heating issues, brakes, there's always something. Uh, well, I guess our only complaint, not even complaint, would be a little more pressure in the master cylinder, right? We need that. Yep. Uh, but heating, everything, nothing rattles, nothing bangs, handles incredibly well. And geez, it's fast. But I would probably go, what, 323, 355? 355 would be a good gear. I mean, that first gear is so short. You're out of first gear before you even let the clutch out almost. So, But geez, it just pulls so hard. I want to thank uh, Jim. Jim, thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thanks Mike, for thank you very us. much, yeah, guys. He's, uh, he's ring boys up there in uh, Wisconsin. Man, I tell you, them bib overalls, they build good cars. Yeah, so nice job, guys. Really impressive, really impressive. And congratulations on winning the awards at SEMA. It's, it's you, really, it's really, keep an eye on these guys. They do do great stuff. And all your stuff is available, right? All the, it is. If you, you know, go to their website and all their stuff is available. And uh, I got to order some of this stuff. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>